Hi, my name is Stephanie Schaefer and I teach American Studies in Germany to students of literature and culture of the United States and North America. And today uh, I'm going to read you a little excerpt from a play that I've taught many times, Charlotte Perkins Gilman's Something to Vote For. It was published in 1911 um, in uh, the magazine The Forerunner and uh, republished in a collection called On to Victory, Propaganda Plays of the Women's Suffrage Movement, collected and edited by Bettina Friedl in 1987 and published by Northeastern University Press. The play stages uh, a women's club meeting in an eastern city around the turn of the century. The meeting is headed by Mrs. Carroll, a wealthy and uh, beautiful young widow who is the president of the club. And she's also able to quote swing the town with her opinions. She's a social, what we would maybe today call an influencer. The topic of the meeting is the issue of clean milk, since many babies in town have died from infections based on contaminated milk. So um, because of Mrs. Carroll's great influence, she is able to uh, invite the local milk producer, Mr. Billings, to join the meeting where one of his bottles will be tested by the inspector, Mr. Arnold. As a speaker, Ms. Carroll also invited Dr. Strong, a woman doctor from Colorado who brings one of her patients um, to share the news of her baby's death due to bad milk. So while the main conflict is about milk, um, the real trigger is the mention of um, suffrage and uh, the fight for the right to vote. Among most of the club members are uh, staunch opponents of the suffrage movement. They want to hear about milk, but they don't want to hear about suffrage. But by the end of the play, they're converted because they realize that the issue of clean milk can be achieved only through exercising political power. I like to teach this play because it makes perfect uses of the aesthetic and stylistic toolkit of drama. So it uses various forms of dialogue, uh, it uses props, asides and monologues, a dramatis personae that is characterized through implicit and explicit means, through gossip by other figures and through the public performance at the club meeting that takes place in the gendered space of Mrs. Carroll's home. It's a great play for introducing students to the workings of, of drama. As, I will see, as we will see in the excerpt, I will read, the play easily extends the club meeting to um, the audience space. So uh, one of my teaching suggestions uh, would be to kind of imagine how you would stage this play. It easily breaks the fourth wall because there's speech giving and audience reactions. And that's what I wanted to share with you. In the excerpt I will read, Dr. Strong, in keeping with her name, comes on strongly to the women of the club. As she starts to speak about milk, she quickly flusters the members uh, by mentioning suffrage. And her speech is then interrupted by the scandalized uh, club women who cite arguments against um, suffrage. So here's the excerpt. Dr. Strong coming to the platform. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm very glad to meet you and feel that you have honored me with membership in what I understand is the most influential women's club in this community. I've heard that this is a very conservative club, but I find that you are interesting yourselves in one of the most vital movements of our time, the question of practical politics, pure milk. And this is when the ladies cool and stiffen at the word politics. It is a great question, a most important question, one that appeals to the mother heart and housekeeping sense to, of every woman. It is a matter of saving money and saving life, the lives of little children. I don't know of any single issue now before us which is so sure to make every woman want to vote. The ballot is our best protection. And this is when all hell breaks loose. Cries of no, no, much confusion and talking among the members. Miss Wolverhampton rises. Madam President, I rise to a point of order. I move you that our new, that our new member be informed that all discussion of woman suffrage is forbidden by the bylaws of this club. Mrs. Black chimes in. I wish to second the motion. We decided long ago to allow no discussion of women's suffrage. I consider it to be one of the most dangerous movements of our time. Then Miss White. Uh, women's suffrage breaks up the home. Then Miss Green and Miss Gray start shouting over each other. A woman's place is in the home, Madam President. If she takes good care of the home and brings up her children right, and Mrs. Brown, women are not fitted for politics. They haven't the mind for it. And my husband says, politics is not fit for women either. 
This club, Mrs. Jones shouts, decided long ago that it was against woman suffrage. Who take care of the baby? And this is when Mrs. Carroll raps feebly on the table. Ladies, ladies, we will adjourn for some refreshments. Won't you please all come and have some tea? So, you can see that uh, the women go crazy at the mention of politics and of uh, the ballot. Um, from today's perspective, the question of suffrage for women is long resolved. The arguments of the women opposing suffrage at the beginning of the century uh, are in keeping with 19th century tropes of the angel of the house's care work, the cult of domesticity, as well as upholding the myth of separate spheres, so men in the political sphere and the public sphere and women in the domestic sphere. Gilman shows us the paradox of 19th century women club, women's clubs. They worked for social causes but shied away from supporting the political quest for suffrage in an expression of a kind of a domestic feminism. Gilman herself was a sociologist, a socialist, a suffragist lecturer and prolific writer. Her play dissolves the myth of separate spheres by arguing that the issue of milk is political, with a special eye to the all-pervading power of politics inside the American home. Uh, in a pamphlet entitled Eminent Opinions on Women's Suffrage, Gilman wrote that politics governs even the purity of the milk supply. It is not outside the home, it's inside the baby. So, how are the domestic feminists of the club converted to fight for the vote? Intriguingly, it's not Dr. Strong's example that sways them. While they admire her expertise, she stands apart from the chattering club women because of her unwillingness to engage in small talk and of her scientific judgment, so she really can't enter this, um, this uh, women's club. Instead, the resolution of the club members comes through a solidarity of mothers. All are moved to tears in a sentimental scene when the Irish mother talks about the loss of her only child. Bettina Friedel argues that in propaganda literature such as this, quote, the human interest angle often works more effectively than purely scientific arguments, unquote. Sentimentality here leads the way to political activism, to strive for a better public order, for a better public order through what Heike Paul has called civic sentimentalism. But change came slowly and took a lot of patience. The 19th Amendment, the Women's Suffrage Amendment, was reintroduced to Congress, remember, every year beginning in 1878, and it was finally ratified in, on August 26 in 1920. That's a full 42 years. I think in the year 2020, um, the centennial of the 19th Amendment in the US, Gilman something to vote for proves critically relevant. Its stereotypical portrayal of Mrs. O'Shane should be viewed as critically as its inclusion, exclusion of women of color in the fight for suffrage. From today's perspective, the fight for gender equality needs to adapt an intersectional viewpoint and call out heteronormativity, racism, classism, ableism, and um, ageism. Moreover, Gilman's suffrage play shows us not only the politics of drama, but I would argue the drama of politics. While 100 years of suffrage is worth a celebration, women running for, running for or holding public office are vilified and accosted by male competitors and office holders. Think, for example, of presidential nominee Hillary Clinton in 2016 or of Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in 2020. Reading and performing Gilman's something, something to Vote For reminds us that politics and drama are interrelated arenas of struggle and that it's still important to vote for equality. Thank you very much for listening.